Hello everybody and welcome back to another bit of Flyers of content. This time we're not doing DLC speculation, well sort of, or um, any franchise playthrough. Today we're going through my top 20 um, animals I want to see in Plant Zoo within at least the next two years. If they all came this year, that would be great, but um, these are the top 20 animals I want to see. <sighs> Number 20, Secretary Bird. These amazing birds from Africa are one of the most unique um, raptors. They even look like ra raptors, sort of. Um, but uh, they use their very tough, long legs to stomp snakes, um, which is one of the more unique hunting methods that the secretary bird uses. Um, they're found across um, sub-Saharan Africa, from South Africa to Egypt, or just south of Egypt. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, they are one of the cooler birds that could act as a aviary species or an open air exhibit um, species, which yes i don't write scripts for these things <laughs> yeah the secretary bird would be amazing their colorful feathers would certainly make for a nice addition they're also endangered so you have that backing them up Tokyo geckos are a very um special kind of gecko because the reason they got their name is because they said toke 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 which is where you get the toke from um which gives it its name. They're one of the larger geckos and one of the more aggressive geckos too, but their blue and orange patterning is one of the best um, color displays on a gecko that I've seen. Um, they also have, the way that geckos stick to um, smooth surfaces, they actually lift their toes up, whereas um, we, we will um, fold our toes or fingers inwards, but they go outwards, or upwards almost, to create suction as um, they place their feet down. They can um, climb upside down or and near vertical surfaces. Golden stubnose monkeys are one of the um, toughest monkeys as they survive in colder temperatures than most others, even Japanese macaques, which we do have in the game. They also have blue faces and snub noses, which help pr protect them from the cold, um, as many scientists believe. Uh, they also live in tight-knit families and will cluster together to keep warm when it, when it snows. Another amazing animal from China that would uh, make a fantastic addition. The panther chameleon um, is yeah, we, we really need a chameleon of any kind. They're individually um, posable eyes where one can look forward and one can look back. They're, they're special feet, which have an even amount of toes on each side to help grip. At least I think it's even. Just trying to look at this panther chameleon's feet. Um, yeah. I think it's even. Either there or it's five. <laughs> um, they also have cur curled tails and a super sticky tongue, which has a sort of grip at the end, which helps latch on to prey. Um, they also change their color based on their mood and I think sometimes due to their body temperature. It, it's it's complicated that um, chameleons, they, they're still a, a very mysterious lizard. Walrus, um, one of the last remaining uh, Arctic species for the game that we need. I, for some reason, I didn't include musk oxen on my top 20, but musk oxen is another one. But in this case, the walrus, one of the largest of the seals, well, pinnipeds, um, living on large flows of ice in, in large numbers. Everything about them is pretty large. Even polar bears, the largest carnivore in the world, struggles to hunt um, these formidable animals. They are also um, 
quite magnificent with their iconic tusks and bulging brown mass. They also have very sensitive whiskers, which they'll um, use to find clams on the ocean floor. And they also use suction to suck the fleshy inside of the clam out, out of the shell. Kiwis are one of our New Zealand's most famous bird. The North Island brown kiwi is the most widespread in captivity, even found in American and European institutions. They are mostly nocturnal, if not entirely nocturnal, which is why you'll mostly find them in nocturnal houses um, where they are more active. As small animals, um, they are best safe from predators at night. The mo yeah. You can tell that I, don't, I did not write a script for this. But, um, yeah, they're a pretty cool species. One of the only other ratites that we would need in the game. And, um, yeah, you get some New Zealand representation. The spectacle bear um, I was speaking about is a symbol of the Andean Mountains. It is probably its most iconic species with its short nose which makes it um, the last remaining member of the short-faced bear family. And um, they were the largest of, la of the land's carnivores. But now th these smaller relatives are all that remain in the cloud forests and high mountains of the Andes. Um, they are mostly herbivorous and frugivorous, but are entirely omnivorous, take taking all sorts of food that will help sustain them. Um, they get the other name Spectacle Bear because on many animals the pattern around their faces will actually form circles around their eyes just like a pair of glasses. The Fossa or Fusa however you choose to pronounce it um, is the largest and um, apex predator of Madagascar, a specialized lemur hunter able to climb up trees and leap across um, very spacious um, distances between trees, leaping after their very energetic prey. Um, they are probably Madagascar's next most famous animal after the lemurs, uh, probably made famous by Madagascar, them being the main antagonist of the first movie. And yeah, they're just a really cool animal um, that I would love to see in the game. The King Cobra, the largest of the venomous snakes found across south southern and southeast Asia, um, eating other snakes. It's not even a true cobra, but it is a fantastic species that we would, we, I would love to see in the game. Well, I say we, we there are many people that play the game who would love to see the King Cobra, I being one of them. And, uh, yeah, just an, aw an awesome species that can um, give reference to those um, scenery pieces in the Indian theme. Great to see. The wolverine, the largest, well, one of the largest mustelids in the world, um, found across North America, northern North America and Europe and Asia, um, mostly found in the Taiga region of the northern hemisphere through through the boreal forest feeding on prey that's much larger than themselves so going up to reindeer and uh, some of the hardiest animals being found all the way up in the arctic the black rhino is um, one of the most endangered animals in the world but it's slow but and steady uh, population increase in recent years um, is has helped rise the black rhino population. What subspecies we get, I don't know, but the eastern black rhino seems to be the most famous and the one that people want the most. Um, it would also be great for safari parks and conservation um, focused areas in your zoos. And yeah, just another awesome African rhino. Because, um, yeah, they are absolutely amazing with their triangle lips used for um, feeding on small trees and bushes. That that prehensile lip is specially adapted um, for browsing. 
whereas the white rhino's square lip is best for grazing. The false gharial or Thomastoma is my personal favourite crocodilian with its prehistoric appearance, its awesome coloration, and just the very nature of the animal. It is one of the most iconic Southeast Asian species of crocodilian. And um, yeah, it's found in many zoos across the world, in many Southeast Asian sections um, in zoos. And it would just be an interesting species to see. I just love them because they are so cool looking. And uh, yeah, false gharial all the way. The Goodfellas tree kangaroo is one of the many species of tree kangaroo of Papua New Guinea and it's very distinct coloration, almost very similar to the Matsuki's tree kangaroo, which I've never seen, but I've seen Goodfellas in abundance in uh, many zoos. They are also an endangered species and would add probably the best um, representation of Papua New Guinea outside of Birds of Paradise, which you'd probably get in an Avery DLC. Didn't really cover too many in my speculation video, but tree kangaroos. If we don't get um, Birds of Paradise, tree kangaroos are the next best bet. South American Kawati, a relative of the raccoon, which we already have in the game, holding their tails high um, above the forest floor, making them much like lemurs. Um, well, ring-tailed lemurs specifically, um, you can really confuse them with that. They are omnivores, using their long muzzles to, um, f yeah, what what are they? Yeah, they have a really good sense of smell too. Um, their long muzzles, I'm pretty sure, are very good at um, getting into tough food. Uh, oh, I, th I think. Oh, what what are Kawadi's best? best at what is a kawaii mundi's nose best for um use its nose for oh yeah okay that's what I'll, those are the words i was looking for it probes gaps between rocks and searches under piles of leaves for grubs it, and they feed on insects fruit rodents lizards and even small snakes wow they're much like honey badgers than anything else um yeah Kawadis, really cool South American species that would also be able to climb. Google need to help me out because I, I've never seen a Kawati, but I've seen them in pictures and um, they are very widespread in, in zoos. So I guess they are one to be had in the game. Hamadrice baboon. Now, these I've seen recently. Um, they have glorious mantles of hair, on the males at least. Um, and are very iconic of the Red Sea area of Africa and Saudi Arabia. Um, their red faces, red behinds, uh, make them very distinct among baboons, especially the silver hair. No other baboon really looks like them. And um, they're very widespread in captivity. Their large canines uh, make them a very majestic and formidable sight. Joffrey spider monkeys, or spider monkeys in general, are one of the best adapted animals for it, for the treetops, using their um, long tail as a fifth limb. Their prehensile tail helps them um, hold on to a branch while their legs and arms dangle free. They um, are also one of the most endangered um, primates in uh, Central America, um, with many kept in captivity, and they are very easy to breed it seems because I hear about spider monkeys being born all the time and it seems like their um, population captivity is going really well and they are found in many institutions so they are one of the best animals I could see come into the game especially in a rainforest pack speaking of rainforest packs sloths specifically the Linnaeus's two-toed sloth the most widespread in captivity Inhabiting many different exhibits with other animals such as giant anteaters and monkeys. They would be fantastic as sloths are very stationary uh, animals. Even though they move a lot, they also sleep a lot. <laughs> feeding on 
very juicy leaves. They want to get the most energy and moisture out as possible while they're up in the trees. They only come down to the forest floor when they need to, well, do their business. And surprisingly, sloths are very good swimmers. Um, who would have known? Um, they also, their fur also acts as, as weirdly um, its own ecosystem with several different organisms living within the sloth's fur, such as the sloth moths and several mites and um, other small invertebrates making their home in a forest of hair. Top three, Red River Hog, the most colourful pig in the world, iconic animal of the Congo, um, inhabits several areas um, within zoos. It could be a species at a safari station. It could be inhabiting the same enclosure as mandrills and um, similar areas as gorillas. Um, they also have lovely tufts of hair on their on their ears, so it'd be like the caracal. Um, would be really nice to see if they like made them flick their ears. Yeah, they're a very cool and colourful pig. Would love to see them. The African Crested Porcupine is one of the largest of the rodents. Um, with their spectacular set of quills, which are actually which is actually made of compressed hair follicles. So basically, if you see a porcupine, you're looking at very sharp hair. Um, and like all rodents, their teeth never stop growing. They just have to maintain them. And yeah, I I really would love to see a porcupine. They are one of the animals that was a missed opportunity for the Twilight Pack, I think, and the Grasslands Animal Pack even. Um, I would I would love to see the porcupine instead of the striped hyena. Personally, I know there were people asking for striped hyena. But the porcupine was certainly more popular with the audience um, if it were to come in. And it would probably be the only animal in that pack that used the largest, that uses the large burrow because the armadillo didn't. Um, and we need more animals for that large burrow, actually. Not many animals use it. So the crested porcupine would be great for it. And I think we all know what number one is. Tasmanian Devil. Largest living carnivorous marsupial in the world, endangered beyond recognition. Their iconic scream, black and white coloration, their red ears, they are absolutely sensational animals, scavenging on whatever the environment throws at them as the garbage collectors of Australia, making sure disease does not go un unchecked. So... These, they are probably the most iconic animal from Australia still missing. We got the wombat, we got the platypus, we got the emu, and we got the redneck wallaby. This, uh, well, I just remembered it's 2023 now. Um, in 2022, we got those four Australian animals. Tasmanian devil is the most essential that we still need and is my number one most prioritized. So that is it for this moderately unflattering and scriptless video um this is my personal list i would love to um hear about yours and just leave those in the comments below but if you enjoyed it and have ideas of your own like and subscribe and i will see you in the next one Bye bye